Hi, my name is Tristan Nairn. Myself, along with Tyler Chandler and Fernando Hernandez, decided to model our CFD project over why it is so windy in front of the library on the, uh, at the Lamar University campus in Beaumont, Texas. Now, this is interesting because the wind in front of the library is always gusting and blowing very hard, and we wanted to know why, since there's, there seems to be so many buildings to the north of the library, and that's where the wind comes from and uh, normally blows in Beaumont. So it's, it's very interesting to see why the, it is so windy in front of the library. Now, we began in 2D, modeling the entire northern part of the campus all the way up to MLK Drive, and we, we began in 2D, we began modeling uh, the buildings based off of Google Maps using the, uh, the distance function on Google Maps. And we were able to get a, a pretty accurate layout of the university itself. Now in 2D, we can only get certain parameters. So everything in, our, in the real world is 3D. So we may have only been getting the top layer or the bottom layer. So we decided to go 3D do the height dimensions, the trees, the actual height that they would be, the buildings, the actual height they would be. And this gives us a much more realistic answer and, and sees kind of why the wind flows and how it does the way it does. <clears throat> and since the wind is always coming from the northern area, we chose the north to be our inlet and the southern part to be our outlet. Now, what we can do with these simulation results is we can model how the wind flows in between each one of the buildings and and why it seems to route itself to the library and we kind of we kind of realized that it was it was just working its way through the buildings and snaking its way and it just found itself right in front of the library um, and coming in between uh, the building to the the two buildings to the north of the library it was very interesting to see that it was doing this because of the way the geometry of the buildings are and uh, it just goes to show what we can do with CFD and and why it is such a powerful tool for engineers and and uh, and architects and things such as that and another thing we could do is we could we could really see how to stop such severe wind flow or how we could reroute it possibly and there's just a bunch of different different things that we could do and this could this could be used in future projects for uh for preventing things such as this in windy areas how to reroute the wind uh using different buildings or building design or something such as that on on say a job site in order to perform a proper computational analysis on the three-dimensional buildings created on ANSYS it was necessary to create an enclosure that is essentially a wind tunnel the wind tunnel has an entrance and an outlet so the north side face would be the inlet and the south face would be the outlet and the remaining faces would be the walls once the enclosure is applied the the next step in applying the geometry is by is doing a boolean which means that the inside objects of the enclosure which is the buildings will be subtracted from the overall enclosure which is the wind tunnel it is necessary to do this function so that ANSYS recognizes that there is objects inside of the enclosure and wind will go through the buildings and which is what we wanted to simulate it after the building is done the mesh can be done so at first we wanted to do a mesh that involved doing a face meshing but the face meshing took a long time and whenever it was done generating it essentially crashed the computer because it was too too big of a mesh too fine of a mesh and we didn't have enough computational power to do that and and so in order to continue doing a successful mesh we decided to do edge sizing on each individual edge of every building so after doing that letting it run for some time to mesh because the mesh was pretty big it worked and after it worked on the cfg setup part of ansys an issue we ran into was that it was hard to see the mesh and the mesh function of fluent 
So we were we had to see this through the fluent part of CF or the fluent software. So as you can see, it's a, a pretty good mesh. So some of the characteristics that we were programming programming in fluent involved uh, k epsilon error at standard conditions, uh, an inlet velocity of 10 meters per second, uh, which is close to 30 miles an hour, which is the average wind of a cold front. Uh, second order upwind, steady, not transient. Uh, we increased the turbulent length, um, and all residuals were set to 1 times 10 to the fifth. Uh, so initialization was set up, again, with respect to inlet. We did 500 iterations. We could have done a lot more, but our computers can't handle that. So here's some of our results. Um, these are just velocity contours. We weren't really concerned with pressure or anything else. So this is like the area of interest right here. And you can, it's, it's hard to see, but you can kind of see how the wind just wraps around through the undergraduate advising, advising center and, and comes through here and comes around the library. There's more results. So of course, um, with any project, you're gonna have issues. With this project, we had a lot of issues. Originally, we did our project in two dimensions, but our results weren't very accurate. Uh, didn't really resemble the like velocity of the cold front coming around. It was like two meters per second, which wasn't very accurate. So that's why we did it in 3D, but 3D doesn't run very well. So it, it took us some time to mess with several settings and meshings to make sure that we could run this in a healthy amount of time. Um, and then, I don't know if you guys are working in, in 2D, but there's like a surface area limitation to what you're doing in 2D. So if, if your faces are beyond a certain tolerance, like it's hard to make a surface out of that sketch. So that's something that we ran into 2D. So we had to scale everything down to like one one hundredth of a scale to successfully run our project. So as you can see, to the right of the, the slide with the yellow boxes, we have two computers. Uh, the top computer uh, on the right was the computers provided to us in our mechanical engineering lab. But those computers are outdated by several years, so it was hard for us to run our CFD project on those computers because uh, we were doing just uh, simple uh, 3D model and, you know, 500 iterations, it would, um, you know, take hours to complete. And, you know, as, as mentioned before, you know, we had a lot of issues with the meshing because the RAM on that computer on the top right, you know, was not enough to successfully have a really, really fine mesh, which, you know, uh, leads to better results. So uh, I think Lamar got a some kind of Alienware computer with, with an i9 processor. So we were able to rerun our project on this new Alienware computer and it ran a lot faster. We were able to do uh, around 1,000 iterations, but we were also limited in our knowledge uh, of ANSYS, uh, more specifically of Fluent. So in our mesh, we were having issues with the mesh not converting. So we would um, you know, do a refinement edge sizing, but the mesh would crash on us, even on a, a, a better computer. So we, we weren't sure what was going on with our mesh. So that's kind of why our triangular face count is pretty low. I think uh, one of our professors who was helping us with this project was saying that the uh, you know amount of faces we need on our mesh was around you know half a million or something like that. So um, we we feel like this project went well for our you know short uh, amount of knowledge in Ansys and Fluent. Um, you know we thank you guys for watching this video. We'd love you know if anyone sees this and has a little more uh, CFD knowledge than what we have, if you know they would have any comments on this or any questions that we can try to answer. Thanks.